We'll go potty. We'll go potty. You wanna go potty? Let's see if we have found a wild Tasmanian devil. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So on our last episode, you saw I introduced you to the turbo kit that I'm putting into the BMW behind me here. And today we're going to start working on the hot side for the turbo. That's going to include mounting the headers, building the pipes, feeding the turbos, wave skates, and down pipes. So once we get that all finished, we'll go ahead and move on to the oiling portion of it. But for now, we'll go ahead and get this one started and try to get this knocked out. So let's get to work. So I got the new up and forward turbo headers on. Uh, do not have the passenger side on yet. There is going to be an interference with the strut tower here. I did mark where I'm going to have to uh, clearance this one. So we're going to grab the BFH and go ahead and beat that into submission. And we should have enough. There's only a few inches it needs to go in. And it's not going to interfere with the actual strut. So we should be fine there. Worst case, I'll have to get out the grinder and go ahead and cut out a little bit of the section of there. But then I'll go ahead and uh, make some patches that give it the clearance they need and then weld them back in. I shouldn't have to do that, though. There should be plenty of room to go ahead and move that in. All right. So that was a lot more work than I have ever wanted to do. But now it's all the way in. And now I can actually start mocking up the turbos. So the next step is going to be trimming out this fender well here. And this section is going to need to go for me to be able to get the turbo through here. Uh, mainly just this portion sticking out, this lip right here. Everything else is fine. Everything else can stay. This is the only section that's having a little bit of interference from me getting it clocked just enough back that it's going to be able to pass up where I have the radiator mounted now. So I'll also have to take this pinch weld off here and just give that extra room for it to sit. So I'll just chop these off front and back and then fold it over or end up slicing it right off. Eh, we'll see. But now we have the radiator uh, mounted up here. So that was the section that was taken off and that's about how far back the radiator is going to be able to sit now. So it kind of sits right in this pocket here in our seat right there. So that was a section of how much of the frame had or how much of the body had to be chopped for that to fit. So as you can see right there. And the clearance is all good on there. So, so as you can see up here where we have it now, it's actually almost just flush with the core support before it was 100% run of the core support. So it actually stuck out a couple inches in towards the engine bay. So now the turbos will actually have room to sit right in front of the radiator. Uh, only one I'm gonna have an issue with is the exhaust housing is going to have to sit a little bit lower than the radiator outlet here but i think I'll, i should have enough room once i trim these out and get rid of this pinch weld these will have plenty of room to sit uh, for the turbo to sit a little bit lower So we got that section cut out. I've got a lot more room to work with now to get this turbo clock the way I want it. That way we can get the exhaust housings to line up a little bit better and get it away from the radiator. So that should give us enough 
And if it's not, we do have a lot of room to work with with this. So we can actually move a lot of this out of the way and that shouldn't be a big deal. So stay tuned. All right, so we have all the trimming done and I just went ahead and test fitted up the turbos with this really crappy jig I made in my basement. It kind of sucks, but it works, so, okay. So it looks like we're gonna have just enough room for everything. Uh, everything fits perfectly where it needs to. I might need to clean up this fender well just a little bit and give it a little more room right here. Either that or I'll just raise the turbos up about an inch or so. I mean, I'll give a good clearance for that. So the only thing that really bugs me on this is the fact that the turbos won't be symmetric with the headers and that's just because the engine is offset to the passenger side a few inches. So while the passenger side turbo will actually line up perfectly with the header, the driver's side will not but that's just the offset of the motor in there to clear the steering shaft with the CX Racing Kit. Which I'm actually, I think this one's going to be a lot easier to make the dump pipe come off of it because I'm going to have a little more room once I make the curve and then curve down. I'll actually have a little bit more room coming off of here to dump, put my dump pipe so that it'll actually have a natural flow. And then that can go to my wastegate and then tie directly into the uh, down pipe here. So... This one's going to be a little bit more tricky, so I'm not. I'm just going to be able to have a small curve here, which means that I actually won't have to do any pie cuts or any special cutting for that one. I can actually use a piece of the prevent exhaust pipe that I already have here, and then just chop that and make that section there. So that is going to be a lot easier to actually fit that one in. It's going to be one solid piece, no pie cuts. I don't think I'm going to be able to do the same thing over here because as you can see it's going to have to come over really really tight and then back down so those will be two extremely tight uh looks like two tight 90s that it, uh, have to twist right in the middle to kind of make an s so that's probably going to be better done with pie cuts so i guess i get to learn how to do pie cuts now so yay for me all right guys so it's coming along here pretty good we got both headers mocked up to the inlets on the turbos so these are just placed in there right now. Then I'll go ahead and tack weld them as soon as I'm happy with how they're sitting. And then I'll have them go ahead and weld it up. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. This has to be the worst part about doing this exhaust system. Pie cuts. Especially a radius pie cut like this. So I just have a little bit more cleaning to do to get that gap out of there. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and tack them up. And I think that they're actually sitting pretty good here. They're actually very, very symmetrical right now and almost perfectly lined up. So once I get these welded in completely, then I can go ahead and uh, cut a hole and go ahead and uh, route my wastegate pipe and get that welded in as well. No more jig, tack welded in. Gotta get them fully burned in, but I think I might have them sent out to do that just because I wanna make sure that these don't crack and I don't trust my welds well enough to do this myself. I still need to add in the exits here for the wastegates, but other than that, they are just about ready to be burned in and actually really solid. Even just tack welded, these things are just solid. They're not going anywhere. So now all I have to do is, like I said, get these burned in, get the pipes welded in and have these cut for the wastegate dumps. And then I can work on the down pipes and go ahead and get the waste gates mounted in there. And then start running the oil ports for them. Oil feed and drain, which I have all the parts for. Looks like I'll have just enough room with the radiator pushed forward into the radiator support. Just to get the clearance I need. And luckily that hose fitting came up right above the turbo. I am going to have to put a turbo blanket on that though. I think it's going to be way too close for comfort there. This is actually going to get pulled up a little more once I put the mounts in for it. So it's going to actually get further away, but it's still a little close and I'm going to have to also wrap the radiator hose and pipe with some heat shielding. So I think it'll work. We'll see how long it lasts before I ended up going with a different radiator altogether. That's going to be smaller and deeper so I can get them away from the, the turbos here. Uh, other than that, I do have the trans cooler down there that still needs to be mounted to the back here. Or actually, I'm sorry, onto the front. And then the two E-fans. Uh, both of those are going to clear just fine. So. All right, so I'm working on getting the pie cuts done to uh, mock up my downpipe. 
Uh, these will actually all be stacked up. I only need four of them to make the 90 degree bend. So these will actually be tacked together and then I'll be able to mock up the downpipe coming out of the turbo. That way we can get the wastegate location finally plumbed in. So four of these will make a 90 degree bend. And just in case anybody is wondering, so a four and a half inch cutoff wheel and freehand cutting this stuff does suck. If anybody else is gonna try doing this, do yourself a favor, $90 Harbor Freight, 14 inch cutoff wheel. So the way I've been tackling this is I do have a template that I use, slide over the pipe, make my marks on the pipe, go ahead and cut these out, and then I will go ahead and clean them up on my bench sander. This is what they'll come out looking like once they're cleaned up. They actually fit together pretty smoothly, and it's actually about as good of a result of actually having a chop saw to do this. So they're actually nice clean lines once they're cleaned up. It does take a little bit of work to get these cleaned up like this and make sure that there are no rough edges. So we have to deburr these and we have to take these rough edges down any low spots like this here and make this completely flat and that does take a little bit of work on the bench top sander so you got to put a little bit of work in and like I said do yourself a favor go ahead $90 14 inch chop saw abrasive wheel chop saw at Harbor Freight and if any of you guys are thinking of a Christmas present for me yes Alright, and just like that we have our downpipe, one of our downpipe 90s mocked up and tacked together. So we cleaned up the pie cuts and went ahead and tacked them together. So now we can go ahead and mock this up on the turbo, I can tack it into the flange. So now we can actually mark our location for where the wastegate is actually going to be uh, teeing into this line. And then we can go ahead and measure our pipe for the wastegate and go ahead and cut the hole and tack those lines in here and then the wastegate will be completely mocked as well. And we can go ahead and work on the rest of the exhaust going down, get the Y pipe made for the left and right side turbos to connect to. And then we'll go ahead and put an O2 bung in the Y pipe for those so we can mount up the wide band. So let's keep knocking this out. Alright, and there you have it. Have I mentioned how much I hate pie cuts? Really hate pie cuts. 
but we now have the down pipe. We have all the pipe coming into and out of the turbo mocked up on at least the passenger side right now. We'll go ahead and finish up the same steps on the driver's side, and then we will go ahead and work on our wastegate location. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Look at that. We have the hot side completely fabbed up. Uh, I do have some finished welding to do on the down pipes. And then we have to finish the crossover and merge pipe for the down pipe. And, but that's going to actually be very simple compared to what we've already got done. Uh, ignore my boogered up welds. That's a flux core welder for you. I'll go ahead and clean those up later. And then we'll get these heat wrapped because they're going to be too close to the radiator and the charge pipe going up to the intake here that these are going to be pretty radiant so we're going to get these ones wrapped up so you'll never see them i don't really care too much about that now uh i might just leave the headers no i'm going to go ahead and wrap the headers too because they're just going to be too close to the plug wires but as you can see we got the heavy work done so everything's mocked up uh most of this is burned in already like i said i just need to clean up those boogered up welds that way they don't look so ugly as you can see, we also moved the O2 sensors up close to the end of the headers. So it's going to be a lot easier to get to these later if I need to pull them out for any reason at all. Rather than climbing under the car, just have them right underneath the hood. It's going to be a lot easier. So each one has a narrow band bung for them. And then right after we merge the two sections together, we'll go ahead and put the wide band bung in there. Not really the happiest with the way these welds turned out, but this is the only thing I have right now. I do want to upgrade to a MIG welder as soon as possible it's just uh money's going into the turbo kit right now so that's on a future to-do list and the flux core welder is doing okay for now and i've seen plenty of people use them and have just good fine results with them uh i do know that they're not the best in the world for practically anything at all so if we do have issues with this later on this is where i'll go ahead and readdress it uh take this down to a muffler shop and have them correct my mistakes or have them correct my bad welds but for now this will get it running and going and in the future i could always go ahead and scrap this turbo kit and since i already have it built it'd be really easy to build another one based on this and just do a clean swap over to another one with much better welds which actually might be the plan so this is just going to be good enough for now all right as you can see the hot side is almost 100 percent complete now so we put a lot of work into getting this to where it is now uh probably going to be the most amount of work that this turbo kit's gonna entail so everything is done from the headers to the turbos to the wastegates as you can see got our o2 sensor bungs welded in both sides uh all i have left to do is a very short piece of pipe here to tie this pie cut 90 into the crossover pipe to make the merge and then right behind it as it goes right back here we're going to go ahead and put a bung in for the wideband o2 sensor which is going to get moved up here as well so just tying this down pipe here into the crossover making the merge is going to be a pretty quick one that's just going to be connecting that in marking the location and cutting out the hole before I weld it and then just burn it in. So other than that, we just have to burn in the rest of these tack welds that are holding these in. A lot of this already has been burned in, but right, we have this dump pipe here, the flange, this flange going into the bottom of the wastegate, and then all of the new pipe I just put in for the crossover and merge. So once that's done, the hot side is complete, and then we just have to tie it into the exhaust system that's already down there. And that's going to be maybe three pieces of pipe just to run it down, to run back to the firewall, down, and then tie into the existing exhaust system. That's going to be a really quick and easy one. So. so I hope you guys enjoyed watching the progress I've been making on this. I'm going to try to make sure I put out videos as soon as possible whenever I do another section of this. We'll try to keep it in steps of uh, doing the hot side, doing the cold side, doing the oiling and getting it started up and tuned for the first time. Uh, other than a couple small things to do with the hot side, just the uh, passenger side turbo dump tied into the crossover, the hot side is finished. So we're going to go ahead and leave it off at that. I hope you guys have enjoyed what you've been watching so far. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe, guys. Uh, go ahead and check us out on Facebook and Instagram, 815LSXSwaps on both. Thanks for watching, guys.